when you are into research delivering your findings is as important as performing experiments there are various ways of doing this you can publish your research as research paper or articles or a thesis or as news articles you may refer to my other videos on research and publishing to know more about these Today I will talk about one of the most effective ways of presenting your research which is a research presentation. You will know why a researcher must give a research presentation, what are its benefits, what are the kinds of research presentation, what makes one research presentation poor and other one exciting. I will share some of the useful tips to make an effective research presentation and some common mistakes to avoid. So stay tuned till the end. So let's begin with why a researcher should present his or her research. There are several benefits of presenting research in front of research supervisor or colleagues or external faculties and students. We will have a look at each of these. When we do experiments, we get lots of data which often remain unorganized or not properly compiled to useful information. The first benefit of research presentation is that if one has to present research, he or she needs to get all this stuff together and finalize the outcomes. Thus it helps getting our data compiled. Another benefit is that we get to know more about our work when we prepare a presentation. We get more clarity of our research because we need to show it and convince it to others. Frequently presenting the research in front of others helps building self-confidence and improve communication skills. Delivering a research presentation is a great way to communicate and convey what research you have been doing since years to others. What were your major findings, what difficulties you faced and how you overcame them. What was the significance of your work and how it is going to create an impact on the science, society and environment. Other researchers may learn from your work and use your experience to plan their research and troubleshoot their experiments. Examiners or other faculties can give their expert suggestion on your research. They can point out what is lacking, provide useful suggestions and opinions about your work, which indeed will help you to improve and plan further. It opens up an opportunity to collaborate with other researchers who are working in your area of interest. Through collaboration, you can expand your research to other areas that are not of your expertise. Coming on to what are the types of research presentations, depending upon the purpose and to whom you are presenting, the presentations are of following key types. A routine lab presentation, where on a regular interval, for example, once every week, researchers present the results of the work done in the previous week and their plan for the next week in front of whole lab and a research supervisor. This is a good way to track the progress made by the researcher and pointing out the shortcomings and suggestions. A journal paper presentation. In such presentations, a researcher presents a published research paper which is usually relevant to their current work. Its purpose is to generally help the researcher understand how a research paper is written, how experiments are designed, executed and how the results are presented in a paper. A thesis presentation which may be a synopsis or dissertation or a viva. The presenter defends his or her research in front of others. If you want me to make a separate video on any of these presentation types, please mention in the comment below or email me. Conference presentation. Conferences are the platform where researchers from various parts of a country or across the globe meet up, present their research work and build up connections to facilitate collaborative research. Young researchers usually present posters while more experienced one delivers in the form of presentation slides. A lecture presentation. Professors and research experts deliver lectures on a particular topic or theme to the audience. Interview presentation. If you are applying for an academic or research position, you may be asked to present the work you have done during previous research projects. Proposal presentation. When applying for a research grant, you may be asked to present your research proposal in the form of presentation in front of research committee. Now let's talk about how to make and deliver a presentation. The first key thing is know your audience and purpose of presentation. For example, if your purpose is to deliver a lecture to young students, you should make it simple and less technical so that they can grasp the main content. 
if the purpose is PhD defense, you need to provide all the necessary details including material used, methodology followed, statistical and other analysis done, major findings, etc. If it's for research grant, you may highlight the importance of the work and the strategy you now will follow. Now let's quickly see what a general research presentation should cover. You should provide a brief background of the work so that audience will become acquainted with the research. Highlight the knowledge gap or challenges. Next mention what your research work aims at. What are the objectives of your research? You can mention the method followed and results together depending upon the type of presentation I discussed before. One of the important thing is to conclude each results and what the results infer. Each slide and results should be connected to the next one. It should be easy for the audience to understand what you did, why you did and what were the findings. Based on the findings, you again do certain experiments to find more answers. If your results need further validation, you may mention it too. After this, you may mention your relevant publications and patents. In the last slide, always acknowledge your supervisor, host institution, organizers and other researchers who contributed to your research and funding agencies who supported the research. Once the presentation is over, you may ask the audience for any questions they might have related to your work. Deliver the presentation within the allotted time. For interviews, you may be asked to make 4-5 to five slides covering essential information only. For thesis, ideally you should not take more than 45 minutes. Now some basic points about the research presentation. Use uniform and standard fonts which are of readable font size while making a presentation. Text color should be in contrast to the background used so that it can be easily readable. Keep the background simple, preferably white. Most of the people make mistake at this. So avoid this. Figures should be of good resolution and should not appear blur. Keep animations minimal else it may distract the audience from the main content. Also certain animations may not work on the other computers you will be using for presentation. You can also add relevant videos to the presentation to make it clearer and easier to understand. Avoid putting too much text on the slides. Just mention key points or words and save the details to be spoken. This shows you know your work well. Practice the presentation so you remember what to speak for each slide and avoid long silences. This way you have time to look at the audience and connect with them. Speak clearly and at a normal pace without using too much jargons. So rather than speaking quickly to cover entire content, you should speak at a normal pace covering only essential details. Do not exaggerate your results and claim only what results suggest. So that's all for the today's video. If you learned something new or if you know some essential key points that I missed, do mention in the comment or email me at explorebio at yahoo.com. You can check out my other videos on research and publishing, techniques, genomics, markers and immunity. And finally, thanks for watching and see you in my next video.